New information about that officer involved shooting in Grand Junction last week, so we'll tell you what police are now saying. Plus, get ready to pay a little extra at the grocery store if you plan on using plastic bags to take your items home, we'll explain. And a halt on student loan forgiveness may have a bigger impact in some communities than others. On your side, working for you, you're watching KKCO 11 News at 6. And a quick check of Interstate 70 and some of the highways actually, not uh, not I-70, but some of the highways in western Colorado. Uh, after a day of, uh, well, not turbulent weather, but certainly unsettled, we had quite a bit of snow. Um, at times, nothing really sticking in Grand Junction, but take a look at the Grand Mesa, good fresh powder up there. Highway 50 down in Monarch passing substantial snow. We're going to start up top tonight with Chief Meteorologist, uh, First Alert Meteorologist Stephen Bowers. Stephen, uh, it was a kind of a crazy day locally, but probably nothing like what's happening up in the mountains right now. Yeah, you know that gusty wind that formed overnight last night? It got kind of loud. It was drawing winds down the slopes of the mountains, and that helped to dry out the atmosphere in the valleys, and that's what helped to choke off the biggest part of the snow for us around Grand Junction. Now, we got a little bit, and around Montrose, you're still getting a little bit, but the biggest of this snow has shifted up to the mountains, and it's going to continue to shift its way away from us, but there is some moisture back behind this, and we're not completely finished with at least the chance for snow, but I think it's going to be more spotty in nature as opposed to the more widespread activity that we've had around throughout the day today. Most of us get a break this evening, though. We'll cool very slowly underneath these clouds and with temperatures hovering likely right around the freezing mark through at least 9 o'clock this evening. In fact, that cold, that's going to become the bigger deal this week. We're going to talk a little bit more about that, and I'll give you a bit more of an explainer about what went wrong today in the valleys for the snow, all coming up in just a little bit. Bernie. All right, thanks, Stephen. A winter travel alert is in effect right now, and we'll stick around through Wednesday. Take a look at why snow expected across western and southern Colorado. This is what it looked like this afternoon on US 550 at Mollus Pass. This is southwest of Silverton. Winter in the Rockies. Well, our neighbors to the west got hit pretty hard by snow. This is what it looked like on I-15 near Ogden, Utah. People left digging out there, but things were a little more serious on I-84. More than a dozen people had to go to the hospital. The driver of a bus changing lanes and losing control slid off the road onto its side. 25 people were on the bus. Emergency crews took 18 to area hospitals, including two victims in critical condition. So be sure to download our First Alert weather app. Scan the QR code you see right here on your screen. And that way you can stay up to date on the changing weather, especially this time of year all across Colorado. Newly released information shows what police say happened when two police officers shot a suspect on the west end of Grand Junction last week. Investigators say this man, Joseph Mendez, was holed up in the Red Roof Inn and threatened his ex-wife that he'd planned to kill himself. Court records indicate Mendez has a long criminal record, three current cases in Mesa County, all domestic violence, a robbery conviction in California, as well as several probation violations. The judge ordered him to stay away from handguns. We're told that he stole his ex-wife's Glock last week. This is what it looked like outside of that red roof inn. Police say that they had chased Mendez for over a quarter of a mile. The document reported uh, that he stopped, held the handgun to his head, and refused to drop it. Officers say they were concerned about the safety of other people in the area, so an officer shot him. Well, he's now in jail, and two officers remain on paid administrative leave pending the outcome of an investigation. You can read the affidavit online, including the report of a Colorado State Patrol trooper who reported an officer had fired two rounds at Mendez as he ran down the hotel's breezeway. Colorado slated to get over $150 million from CVS and Walgreens for their part in the opioid crisis. The two chain stores will pay over $10.5 million nationwide. Not only will these stores shell out money, but they are court ordered to monitor, report, and share data about suspicious opioid prescriptions. We caught up with Attorney General Phil Weiser during a training in Washington, D.C. He explained that Colorado is set to receive $700 million from drug manufacturers, distribution companies, and pharmacies. It'll fund treatment and recovery programs, and it'll support our law enforcement as we really struggle with a crisis that is the worst it's ever been. In the last recorded year, more people died of overdoses, mostly from opioids, than gun violence and car crash deaths combined. 
All the settlement money Colorado received will be distributed according to a framework set up by the state and local governments. All of it must be used to address the opioid crisis, including prevention, treatment, and recovery services. Well, the third congressional district recount is done in Colorado. Incumbent Lauren Boebert, the official winner. The state ordered the recount because about 500 votes separated both Boebert and her challenger, Adam Frisch. Boebert posted a message to the third congressional district on her Twitter page. Saying, to lead with strength, to lead with grace, and to work hard every day to represent you the very best way I know how. And that starts with a promise. A promise to you to be a good listener to take a deep breath and help take the temperature down in D.C. The state reports Boebert lost three votes. Adam Frisch gained one. Well, most of us uh, get in line at the grocery store and think, what did I forget? Then you look down the belt and see plastic bags. I think I see 11 is a port of Gabriel Gonzalez shows us now uh, and explains to us why that, that forgetfulness, well, one day, right after the new year, it could actually cost you, right, Gabe? That's right, Bernie. If you're like me and have the memory of a small puppy, it's going to cost you literally. The purpose of that cost, encourage the usage of reusable bags. New year, new law. Starting January 1st, a statewide law will require some businesses to charge 10 cents for every plastic and paper bag. And that's perfectly okay. Um, that's fine. I think that we've been constantly trying to make that push anyway. Um, and so um, just having that more of an incentive um, is completely appropriate. Lyle, the manager of Summit Canyon Mountaineering on Main Street in downtown Grand Junction, says he understands the push for reusable bags, even though the law won't affect him. It applies to stores that have three or more retail locations, or stores who are part of a franchise, corporation, or partnership with physical stores outside of Colorado. Other municipalities around Colorado say they are already seeing the benefits of ditching plastic. Boulder started charging 10 cents per bag. The city saw an estimated 68% reduction in the use of plastic bags. Fort Collins started their bag reduction in May. According to a city representative, the bag usage dropped 85%. And it's not just Colorado, New York, and California already charging for plastic bags. Here's what this resident has to say about her experience in Canada. Well, I just spent three months in the Canadian provinces and there are no plastic bags in, in Canada. It was kind of surprising at first, but there are no plastic bags in the grocery stores or any of the retail stores. Not one plastic bag in three months. This law comes full circle for a local mountaineer shop whose business focuses on outdoor activities. Yeah, I mean, that's something that a lot of our brands and, and Summit Canyon in general stand for is, is taking care of the environment because that's where we like to recreate, um, take care of it, and it, take care, it takes care of us. Um, and so that's really important. Now, out of that 10 cents, 6 cents will go to the municipalities to fund recycling centers, and the rest will go to the retailer. Plus, we want to know what you think. You can let us know on Twitter or Facebook or go to our website where you can cast your vote. Reporting live, Gabriel Gonzalez, KKCO 11 News. All right, be ready to pay a little more after the new year. Well, housing inventory in the Western Slope continues to grow as sales continue to dwindle. This is according to Bray Real Estate. They say it's thanks to the climbing federal interest rates geared at tackling inflation. According to Bray, the median price of a home in Macy County is now $379,000, up 5% from last year, and overall sales down 19%. And millions of Americans will have to wait until next year to find out if thousands of dollars in student debt will be forgiven. In the meantime, reporter Jaleesa Irizarry shows us how blocking the program could disproportionately impact people of color. Financial aid may not be top of mind going into the holiday season, but Kerleen Egloss will stress, yes, student loan forgiveness is the biggest gift anyone could give. You know, the student loan debt cancellation program was actually going to be very promising. That, that would have been life changing to a lot. Egloss is the financial aid director at MSU Denver. Pausing the student loan forgiveness program is having an impact on borrowers, including Egloss. I'll be honest, it, it was, I too got very excited. I, I have, several, you know, lots of loan debt. I'm a first gen student um, and a lot of our, you know, a lot of our students um, have similar backgrounds and Pell eligible students mostly are students of color um, and they were expected to see up to $20,000 forgiven. What that could have done for many Americans, many students is provide them financial, a bit of financial freedom 
to be able to do things like buy a home, um, you know, make a living for their family. Egloss's points are backed with numbers. According to the Education Data Initiative, Black and African American college graduates owe an average of $25,000 more in student loan debt than white college graduates. The Education Data Initiative also says student loan debt forgiveness would immediately increase the wealth of Black Americans by up to 40%. In the meantime, experts say the biggest present students can give themselves is financial education. Go online, search, make phone calls, and we're here to help you brainstorm. Uh, the United States Supreme Court is expected to decide on the student loan forgiveness program sometime next year. Federal student loan repayment pause has been extended while the government waits for the court's decision. Right now, you are taking a live look at Lord Stanley Cup on display tonight at the Lower Valley Fire Department in Fruta. Wow, of course, the NHL champion Colorado Avalanche won the cup last June by beating two-time defending champion Tampa Bay Lightning four games to two in the finals. If you know anything about hockey, then you know that this regal piece of hardware carries a rich and illustrious history over 100 years. There's only one cup. For the winners, each player gets to spend one day with the cup. Imagine the stories it could tell. Now, your first alert weather with Chief Meteorologist Stephen Bowers. All right, we begin with a live look at radar, which still so shows us some snow. The biggest of the snow, though, has exited up to the northeast. The, the flakes are still flying up around Glenwood Springs, and things are starting to break up around Montrose, but you have had some lingering snow here over the past couple of hours. And we expected the snow today, and we expected that the biggest snow would be over the mountains, but we expected bigger snow than we got along Highway 50. So I want to kind of explain what went wrong, and in short, it's all about the mountains and the mountains do have a big influence on our weather and you may remember this kind of an image or something similar to this from just grade school science. Remember the rain shadow? Yeah, you get the wind that blows up the leeward side of the mountains or the windward side of the mountains, I should say, and it kind of wrings out all the moisture in the form of clouds and precipitation and then on the leeward side of the mountains, you get winds that blow down the slopes and that's a warm and a dry wind. That's kind of what happened today. We had this area of low pressure that tracked in from the northwest of us, and we have a counterclockwise spiral of wind into the center of that area of low pressure. When the wind comes together, it's forced upward, and we need that upward motion to get clouds and to get precipitation. Here's what happened though. As this tracked right across the top of us, see that wind coming off the mountains? It's a downslope wind that fed dry air into that area of low pressure, and that's why, especially down low, a lot of the snow choked over the valleys and we got plenty of snow up in those higher elevations where the upslope element of that wind was really able to keep it going. Now as this starts to shift to the east and we start to pull more wind spiraling into that low as it's to our east, it may be that we can get an upslope wind going and that may help to keep at least spotty snow going tonight and through at least part of tomorrow. But the bigger deal is really going to become this cold with temperatures that struggle to reach freezing for the better part of the next week and maybe even beyond. And there are a couple of spots where we have a chance for some snow. The snow's not the big deal this week, though. It's the wintry light cold. So there goes the bigger snow. It's up in the mountains. As I mentioned, though, there's still is some potential for some more snow, and there's even some lingering moisture back across parts of Utah and uh, Nevada, and all that's going to be trucking eastward. And our future cast picks up really well on the biggest snow scooting off to the east. This becomes a severe weather threat for parts of Louisiana and Arkansas and Mississippi and Alabama here in the next day or two. But then watch as the moisture wraps from the north around that area of low pressure. And yeah, we do get these snowy spots, but they're mostly going to be up in those higher elevations where the upslope wind can really help things out. So along Highway 50, we get zero to maybe an inch or two at most. All right, we get up in the mountains, maybe two to four inches, get up along the Continental Divide, upwards of around a foot or maybe a little bit more of that snow can fall. And then another inch or two is possible down across the San Juans as well. But again, the cold becomes the bigger deal. Tonight, it's about low 20s for lows for most of us. And then tomorrow, we struggle to even hit freezing. And that becomes commonplace here over the next seven days. We're going to struggle to reach freezing. And some days, we may not even reach 30 especially on Friday and Saturday. Highs will only be in the middle and upper 20s around Grand Junction. Lows will dip down into the single digits this weekend. And yeah, we've got a couple of shots at snow, but again, that snow is not the biggest deal. It's a little bit if it happens. 
Uh, Montrose, again, you're dealing with this cold. Highs are going to be dropping back into the uh, 20s. It's single digits to barely double digits for lows. Delta, it's a similar story with occasional snow, but cold upper 20s to lower 30s for your highs and very cold single digits for lows. And you're even colder in the mornings in Cortez, but a little bit more sun in the day way down south may help you break freezing a little bit more than the rest of us. All right, thanks, Stephen. Well, certainly not Country Jam weather. That's six months away, but KKCO is giving you a chance to get a jump start on the jam in our 12 Days of Country Jam Christmas Contest. All you have to do is watch 11 news, KKCO 11 News 6 o'clock every night through December 23rd. For a keyword, you can either scan the screen or jot it down and head over to kkco11news.com and enter. Daily winners will receive weekend general admission tickets to Country Jam 2023, and one grand prize winner will receive a pair of reserved weekend passes with a backstage experience and skybox seats to the performance of your choice. Last night's winner was Tara Bishop. Tara won two weekend general admission passes to uh, Country Jam 2023. This is Friday's winner, I should say. Tonight's keyword, Runaway Jane. Scan the screen, the little code there on your uh, screen, or head over to kkco11news.com to enter again. Tonight's t -word, uh, keyword, Runaway Jane. Good luck. We'll be right back. You can pack, you can prep, you can get to the airport five hours early, but sometimes what you don't know cancels your flight. Karen Kafa has more on how to avoid holiday hassles. You may be dreaming of a white Christmas, but for the millions of Americans taking to the skies this holiday season, snow in the forecast could turn that dream into a nightmare. Weather changes everything, so that's really going to be the, the killer. Experts say a little preparation can go a long way. Clint Henderson, managing editor of The Point Sky, says knowledge is power when hitting the friendly skies. Know what other airlines fly the route that you want to fly. The things go sideways, you're able to rebook yourself. He recommends downloading the airlines app and following them on social media to get the latest updates on any delays, cancellations, or system meltdowns that can cripple air traffic. And avoid potential catastrophe by booking direct flights. Plan for a hotel stay if you get stranded and keep a flexible itinerary. If your plans do go awry, be your own best advocate. If your flight gets canceled, you really want to be the first one who gets a hold of customer service to get rebooked on one of those few seats that are still available. Airlines too may be more prepared for the holiday travel rush after last year's Christmas time COVID surge saw airlines crushed with staff shortages. They are staffed somewhat better. They have reduced flights. So there's there's more give in the system. There's less likely to be a domino effect. And to avoid additional angst at the airport, be sure to arrive early. Avoid checking your bags and take advantage of programs like TSA PreCheck or Clear to get through security with a little less stress. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. And coming up in sports, the latest on Broncos quarterback Russell Wilson's nasty injury. Now, sports with Garrett Brown. Welcome back to the sports desk. The Broncos, they're coming off another tough loss where Bronco fans, they're probably feeling mixed emotions. The team battled back from trailing the mighty Kansas City Chiefs 27 to nothing, but ultimately fell short due to some unfortunate circumstances. Goal is to win. We all know that. But to watch these guys when you're down 27 to zero, I, everybody had a choice on how they wanted to continue that game. And I get, I'm, I'm, I'm so impressed with all those guys. Uh, defense, offense, special teams, they didn't blink. They stayed together. Uh, defense came through with a big play for an interception. Offense was able to play complimentary football and score and continually scored after they got another in interception and then another one. And I just, I mean, that's all. Uh, it's great. It is awesome. It, we got to finish. <laughs> we had opportunities to continually win that game. And uh, I appreciate that. But, and that is kind of that moral victory. But uh, we want to win the, the game. We had a chance to. Uh, but, but I'll tell you, the, the fight that these guys have is, is, is awesome. However, one of the big blows to the Broncos late, that was quarterback Russell Wilson's injury. He left the game with a concussion after a harsh landing trying to run the ball out the field and get another score for the Broncos. So the team had to turn to the former Boise Bronco, Brett Rippon, to come in relief, who played admirably in a tough situation, according to Hackett. It's great. That's the hardest, one of the hardest things to do in this game is for a quarterback that has just been standing on the sideline, hasn't gotten a lot of practice all week, and then he's got to go out there and he's got to execute and win a game for you. And I thought he also battled. I mean, that was an absolutely clutch uh, play to make in the back of the end zone to Jerry. Uh, and uh, then we had, had some other ways to be able to move the ball, and unfortunately it, it didn't come our way. I give the Chiefs a lot of credit. They, they continually battled also. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not ideal, but, you know, it's the mindset is go win the game. Um, you know, whatever it takes. And obviously I've never been in a situation like that before, especially when you're, you know, you come in and you're, you're down on their five yard line. Um, 
it's kind of nice. I wish every drive started like that. But, uh, yeah, man, I'm just frustrated, frustrated that, um, you know, I couldn't get it done because especially after, you know, how, how hard Russ fought, how hard our offense fought. Um, you know, we've been through a lot this year, and uh, I've just seen him battle every single day. And, um, you know, just so proud of that room. So. Unleashes it. The Broncos will look to rebound next week against the Arizona Cardinals, who will be taking on the New England Patriots tonight on Monday Night Football. Wilson, meanwhile, has entered the concussion protocol. His playing status will be up in the air. All right, well, the NFL regular season, it's quickly coming to a close. After Monday Night Football, we only have a couple weeks left, so might as well take a look at the playoff standings. In the AFC, the Bills hold the one seed with their head-to-head -head tiebreaker over Kansas City, who slots in at two. Baltimore and Tennessee, they're your other division leaders. The defending AFC champs, Cincinnati, they're a wild card spot right now since Baltimore beat them earlier in the season. Miami and the Chargers, who just played on Sunday Night Football, they're your other two AFC wild cards for now. But the Jets, Patriots, and Jags, they'll trail behind. And now over to the NFC standings, the team with the best record in the league, the Philadelphia Eagles, they hold the one seed and the NFC East lead. Then your other division leaders, that's the Minnesota Vikings out of the north and the 49ers in the west. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers currently have the best record in the NFC South, despite having a losing record at 6-7. and seven. The rest of the NFC East or the NFC Beast, they would all be in the playoffs if they started today, that being Dallas, Washington, and the New York Football Giants. They hold the three wild cards. Seattle, Detroit, and Green Bay are all close behind. That's your look at sports. We'll be right back. All right, the biggest snow is gone. A couple of flurries are not out of the question, especially down low in the valleys. But I've got to tell you, the air has just been dry in the lowest 10,000 feet of the atmosphere. And so snow that's been falling has been hitting the ground up high, but you get that ground down lower in the valleys and it's just evaporating before we get it. So we had a little bit, mostly grapple and snow pellets a little bit earlier, but I guess a little is better than none, right? We need I guess it counts. Yeah. So we'll take whatever we can get. Hey, if it's in the high country too, that's well. Yeah. Frankly, that's where it needs That'll to be. fill the river. All right. <laughs> Thanks for watching tonight. Much more coming up tonight on The 10. We look forward to seeing you then.